All of my blades are stored up here on this rack. I've just got a shelf where I'm storing my timber. I put some plastic coated hooks underneath there. So all my blades are hanging. When we have a brand new blade, it normally comes with a tag on it. So we know exactly what blade it is. And we know that is sharp. As we get these off the rack, we will change them on our bandsaw maybe two or three times a day. We might be having a thin one, a wide one going on, but we need to have some idea of how worn they are or how good they still are. We've got these little magnets we put on. These are just board magnets. Green means it's probably 75% to 100% still sharp, so it's good for lots of life yet. If we've got a yellow one on there, it means it's probably 50 to 75% still of its sharpness. If there's red one on there, it's getting a bit blunt. I wouldn't try and do anything really accurate with that or trying to cut good clean dovetails or a straight line. There's a fair chance it could waver. Once they start going below that uh, level of sharpness, they're not going to be much good. They're going to be burning. You won't get a clean cut. We hang them on the hook at the end and we know basically that's going to be good for our firewood cutting or some old timber we're going to cut up. And then once they get to a point where they're really not cutting at all, we will just fold them in half and recycle them. Good variety of blades here, but we're going to look at these blades in more detail and show you where we're going to use those and what sort of cuts they will produce for us. I have all my bandsaw blades up on the rack, but I also have a selection of short sample blades. The idea of these short sample blades is we can look in detail at the teeth configuration, the gullets, the TPI, and also we can use them in a jig I've got to help students set up the guides correctly. We've looked at how long the blade needs to be for your bandsaw. Next thing to specify is how wide the blade is. The blades here range from eighth of an inch wide, which is three millimetres, progressively getting larger to an inch wide, 25 millimetres. The narrower the blade, the tighter the curve we can get round. The wider the blade, the straighter cut we're going to get. So we're doing tight curves, small curves and detail work. We want a narrow blade. If we're doing joint cutting, we want a nice fine blade and probably half inch wide is probably fine. If I'm doing a lot of resawing or a lot of cutting timber down or ripping, I probably want a wider blade with fewer teeth. So width is all important but also the thickness of the blade, what we might call the gauge. This actually, although it's a half inch wide, the gauge of this, this is a thin gauge blade, very narrow, as opposed to this one here, which is quite a bit thicker. The thicker blades would not work very well on a small radius bandsaw and a small frame. Those don't want to bend much and they'll put too much strain on your bandsaw. The thinner blades also will give you a smaller curve, less waste in your timber. So we have a thickness of the blade, the gauge, but we also have a set on the teeth, left and right, left and right going up. It's the set that makes them clear the main body of the blade. The bigger the set is, the more waste you will have, but also potentially the the smaller curve you can cut. So the width, the thickness or gauge are important matters that you need to consider when ordering those blades up.